everybody. How's it going? Welcome back to the Arcade and Archive. That's right. We have another, I'm sure you already guessed it by the title of this video, Cautionary Chronicles here for you today. And I am so excited for today's round, as I admittedly usually am, because we just do such a good job, in my opinion, of choosing just interesting, exciting, stimulating stories uh, of all different kinds. And today, I do believe our theme is going to be much more on the upbeat, uh, funny, ha-ha side of things, rather than the real depressing or absolute wrathful rage inducing side of things so you know hey we always love a little break uh every now and then from the vibes here you know switch things up keep you on your toes that's how we keep our relationship fresh isn't that right wouldn't you say so sammy you know yeah, i think that's you know the effort we put into kind of throw. continue this <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Maximum effort all the time. That's what we say. Be a try hard or don't be anything at all. I'm not sure where I was going with that. But regardless, let's go ahead and dive right into today's session, shall we? Excuse me, I lied. Before that, as always, please be sure to like and comment down on the video. We appreciate it so much. Helps us out. Subscribe and share the channel because uh, we primarily rely upon just word of mouth or, you know, just kind of the random uh, maybe recommendation here or there for the channel. And we appreciate that exponentially. So any support you can offer. Thank you so much. So now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive right into this day of Cautionary Chronicles. First story we've got for you is titled A Tale of Two Towers and a Bridge and a barbarian. So this story is about how in the middle of the dungeon, we lost a party member and had one of the strangest conversations I have ever witnessed. Now picture this with the help of this convenient album of images. And they do in fact have a convenient album of images here. Go oh. ahead and open that up, Sammy. Oh, Look it's adorable. This. this, this OP who's titled Bridge Tower Throwaway, which <laughs> you made this account just for, just this, for story this story alone. I love it. You know what? Right, for what context, y'all. Maximum for the viewers at home that can't see it is a hastily put together uh uh Microsoft paint sketch yep. of what seems to be two towers on a hill uh with a rope bridge between the two of them. And showcases it, there two seems individuals to be, on one side. Be, yeah, two individuals on the side and then someone swinging from what I can only assume is the rope from the broken bridge uh, about a hundred feet down into a tower. Yep, into the tower on the other side. And this will all make sense as the OP literally describes the events that transpire here. And that the... particular image was made by the GM to provide a more clear understanding <laughs> of the decisions and actions that a player was wanting to take. It's so often we have art accompaniment. That's what I'm saying. It was like, again, yeah. what did we just say? Maximum effort. We love it here. <laughs> this is why you and D were our first story of the day, Mr. Bridge Tower Throwaway. Uh, our monk, or sorry, our party would be comprised of the monk, which is me, the wizard, the rogue, and the barbarian, who are now are who are now all traversing a dungeon where the intent is that we climb up one tower, cross over to the other tower, and then fight our way back down. Before we go up, we see a bridge between the two towers, so we feel like, hey, this is a wonderful plan. But once we end up reaching the top of the first tower, we face a bit of a roadblock. Someone has cut out the slats of the bridge, and now only the two support ropes for the bridge remain. Being our resident, our resident cat boy, I have a climbing speed, so I ask if I can simply just get across without a check. No problem, says the GM, and I get to the other side first to make sure it's safe. Okie dokie. With my thumbs up, the wizard gums next. He casts Levitate and pulls himself across the gap using the rope. We love it. You know what? We love intelligent uses of low-level spells, you know? Fantastic use. Another easy victory. The Barbarian says he wants to go last. So the Rogue makes some tricky athletics checks to sidle across the ropes to the other side after a few attempts to persuade the GM that acrobatics could work if he balanced on top of the rope instead. He could, but it would be way harder than just using athletics. See, this is why I feel like I feel like acrobatics could also be used to cross this kind yeah, of thing. I, I agree with the deal on this one. Well, I mean, like, but it he's is, like it's more of a climbing than an acrobatics. To I mean, not really. If it if it's like a if it's like a horizontal bridge and all it, like the slats are off, and what you're doing is like using the rope to balance and like pull yourself across, I'd say there's a perfectly reasonable uh, explanation to use acrobatics. Because if he can like walk across with acrobatics, I don't see why he can't like balance and like move across while holding on to it as well. It's less about your strength and more about like your balance. Um, 
But with that being the case, uh, he, with some help from the wizard, the rogue does in fact make it across. But then something completely surreal happens. Barbarian, I want to swing across. DM, what? what? Barbarian, I grab onto one rope and cut it, then swing across. That DM, that's that. You'll fall pretty far and pick up a lot of momentum. It'll be fine. Flabbergasted, the DM draws a small diagram of what exactly will end up happening. Since the gap is 100 feet, he will fall 100 feet and slam with great speed into the side of the tower. Yeah, it'll be fine. I want to do this. The DM guesses that this will probably deal about as much damage as a 100-foot fall would. Nobody here is a physicist, but the guess seems reasonable to all of us. The barbarian then grabs the rope, rages, and swings. There's just one final hiccup, however. We are all only level three. And even with a rage, a combination of some damage we took on the way up the first tower, and a very unlucky roll of the dice, appears to be more than enough to knock the barbarian out cold. He falls unconscious, lets go of the rope, and then falls down, all the way down, and dies. We all slowly turn to look at the barbarian's face. But instead of being scrunched up in anger, he seems only confused. Uh, sorry. What? You hit the side of the wall. You're unconscious, falling, and probably dead. Huh. How did that happen? The rope? It swings? The... The pivot point is up here, so you, over here, go down. The DM re-explains the image that he drew. Barbarian. Oh. I still don't get it, but I guess that's what will happen. Whatever. <laughs> the Barbarian then gets up, grabs his vape, and steps outside as the DM calls for a ten-minute break. After everyone's settled down, we discuss if we want to roll that back at all, uh, since Barbarian clearly somehow didn't seem to understand how dangerous the situation was. But as Barbarian sits down, he simply says, Nah, it's whatever. I guess my dude was also confused in character. I'll just roll up a new guy. So the party, flabbergasted as to what the Barbarian was thinking, and unwilling to go on uh, with a man down into the treacherous second tower, head back home to try again some other time. <laughs> this time with a mysteriously trustworthy fighter we met at the bar. The group went on fine after that, but it did totally throw off the session and the GM's plans for the entire storyline, since the Barbarian's backstory was rather intricately involved. To this day, it still confuses me not only how the Barbarian never understood what was going on, but also how weirdly chill about it he was, given that he had a habit of exploding up over the smallest of issues at other times. Hmm, go figure. In post. <laughs> that is just... I... If there is... I, I don't know, man. Sometimes it's hard for me to really kind of picture... Like, the GM literally went the extra mile and, like, painted or wrote and actually created an actual diagram <laughs> of the series of events that would transpire to literally give a clear image of what would happen. And the barbarian still somehow, like literally, what I I love this. The top comment down there is, man, what exactly was in that vape? Like literally, because I think <laughs> it feels like he was like maybe just high out of his mind. Like he just didn't even he couldn't interpret anything that was being said or told to him. And so he was just like, Yeah, no, that sounds great. I I believe that would be perfectly fine. Like, it's like, what? Wait, <laughs> your friends are up there. If you swing, you're gonna end up down there. Like, I mean, to be fair, how how many D and D players actually understand how fall damage works? Um, well, and even even we've explained to you, I've, I've had people make stupid decisions like that. Um, I mean, but it's, I mean, I feel like, I, uh, to be fair, yeah, I feel like maybe they didn't explain it, like, because obviously how the mechanics well, no, work. I is... think they just, I think they explained it well because they well, had a diagram included. I I but... mean, I mean, like the damage, the the oh. potential, the potential. Yeah. Uh, consequences of these actions no, in terms of again feet. you fall 100 feet how the game works is every 10 feet you fall you take 1d6 of damage so 
technically you can only go up to, I believe, a maximum of 20 D6. But essentially, you fall a hundred feet. <laughs> you're you are you're gonna take what 18 d6, I think, of damage. Yeah, it would be 18 d6 of damage. Uh I think, right? I'm um because because 10, because 10, if it's 1d6 per 10 feet, it would be no no, I'm sorry, it'd be 10 d6 of damage. You you would you would you would take 10 d6 of damage, uh, because it's 10, yeah. So 10 times 10. Yeah, anyway. It would take 10d6 of damage. Um, which is if at, at level three, even with rage and apparently already taking damage, yeah, that that's like and not only just that though, but it's like you okay. you're not you're not gonna be where your friends are. Like your friends yeah. are at the top of the other tower. You are going to swing to the bottom. I would argue like if the bridge was like 10, 15 feet across. And you wanted to swing, brace and yourself against the wall and climb up. Like as a barbarian, that I could see that being a a, a thing to do if you're no not water. like a super smart character and you want to play to the character and you're like, yeah, this makes sense to me. Or, I've done something like this before. It can make but a lot of sense if you're being followed feet, by people. Like if feet. you're if you're being <laughs> followed by people behind you, you're like, okay, I want to cut off their ability to maybe come after us or to cross the bridge. So I'll do that. I'll swing and yeah, then I'll climb up. Like it's like. But yeah, a hundred feet. It's like, ee, I don't know how how he missed the ball, and especially the fact that he said if he blows up at other smaller issues, he must have been just high as a mother effing kite or something. Because dude was just, he was just straight missing. Like it was just all fit, phasing through him like nothing. That either way though is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> I also don't know why the OP decided to take a, make a literal throwaway account just to post this. Like I feel like maybe he's scared that the barbarian will blow up at this too. Maybe which if that's the case, know. maybe you shouldn't play with them. But either way, uh, thank you so much, OP. This was yeah, this was absolutely delightful. Uh, unless you have anything else for this one, Sammy, let's uh, I want to go ahead and move on to the next uh, story of the day. Take it away. Okay. I had first time playing D&D, and I feel like I had some misconceptions about how a, quote, session zero, end quote, is supposed to play out by Deadfish39. Uh, this does have an essay warning. Uh, at the end of the story, there is not really descriptions of it but just the fact that it happens in game um this warning applies to variant story uh it's probably also a minor suicide warning in here as a character tries to kill themselves as a test essentially but no genuine like suicide like suicidal thoughts and i can only pick one warning apologies if the grammar on this is poor it's not my strong suit also i know this is a long ramble but so much happened and it was all just very odd from my perspective so i feel like typing it out Maybe my lack of experience led to my gross misunderstanding of how this would play out, but whether or not it was just me misinterpreting or a genuine issue with clarity, either way, it went extremely poorly, and I feel I should leave the campaign. I'm currently trying to draft up a message saying I would like to quit, but if I leave, it will have to be canceled because one player already quit partway through session, and I feel a little guilty. But mostly, I want to avoid any potential altercations online, and I don't know how to go about it without severely pissing anyone off. A little context, I live in an area with a, with very religious people, so there aren't a lot of people who play D&D, and I had been wanting to try it out for a little bit, so I figured I would find an online game to join. So I found a server that had a campaign starting soon and messaged the DM saying I was interested, but I hadn't played before and was wondering if he was open to a first-time player. He said he was, and that he was still looking for players. I had a character prepared because I was told by other server members that it was the easiest way to go about joining a campaign. My character was a human rogue, but I was informed that one of the other players was already playing a rogue, so I said that was okay and I would make a different character. We then proceeded to do a voice call where he rambled to me for a while about homebrew, uh, in parentheses, that seemed to be a topic of interest to him because he was very enthusiastic about me picking some random homebrew thing for my character. I said I was confused by that and didn't know how to pick homebrew as I wouldn't be able to tell if it was actually balanced or if it was actually a good idea in any way, shape, or form. He said I didn't have to pick homebrew but seemed disappointed and proceeded to go on a 30-minute tangent showing me some sort of April Fool's homebrew on Wikidot. I'm unsure if that was meant to be an example of bad homebrew to help me. I had a bad migraine at this point and felt like someone was shoving an ice pick into my left eye, but I nodded along and tried very hard to listen. He also showed me some poetry he made. 
which I have no comment on because I did not even attempt to read it with my headache, and I'm no and I'm no poetry critic. But I know it was serious in tone and included at least one Star Wars reference. <laughs> I know this because after I declined to read it, he explained that it was a what it was about to me. He also went on a, a great length about how I should not, under any circumstances, attack the NPCs because they were extremely powerful and would essentially nuke my character. He went on a great length about how they were basically gods. I agreed not to do that and thanked him for the warning. Honestly, right off the bat, like... Yeah, like already, there's already some weirdness there. I feel there, like... Huh? Well, I feel like, honestly, right off the bat, the hugest red flag is when a dude is like, you can't play the same class as another player. Like, I feel like that... That's always just kind of a big thing for me, where it's like, why can't people play the same class? Like, there's nothing wrong with that, you know? Maybe it won't be as optimal, to be fair, sure, but if that's what they want to play, and they can do it well, like, let let, let them do it. Anyway, please continue, sorry. Yeah, in the end, we agreed that I would do some research and create a new character and run it by him. After a while, I created my character, Water Genasi Tempest Cleric. I've played with one of those before. Uh, who was quite Tempest proud. clerics are cool. Well, specifically, a Water Genasi Tempest cleric was really one of the, one of the players in the uh, what's it? Um, Tomb of Annihilation. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, who I was quite proud of, and I thought was a pretty good character. I right. tried to pick a decently powerful subclass, given he said we'd be up against strong enemies. I made a sketch of my character and ran it by him. He said he liked it and asked some clarifying technical questions, about half of which were answered. But I figured I could work with the rest out in session zero. Yeah, it's almost like that's what a session zero is for. Anyway, oh, no, I, wow, I got to the concept. session. Yeah, I got to the session. It starts with me and the three other players introducing themselves. They seemed uh, they all seemed to be neutral slash evil aligned characters, but I was expecting that, given we started in prison. So this did not bother me at all. The other players seemed pretty normal and nice to me. Uh, I thought (laughs) that after this, maybe we could work through some of those technical aspects and generally gain a better understanding of uh, what is going to go down. As he had previously said on voice call that I could ask technical questions and work out a better understanding of the game in session zero. But after we all say our names and proceed to jump into an absolutely insane prison break scene and watch one of the aforementioned insanely powerful NPCs proceeds to cause an explosion and teleport, teleport us out of the prison in a matter of minutes before I can open my mouth, basically. So I just decide to go with the flow and hope it slows down soon. We proceed to teleport out and this NPC goes on a whole ramble about how she needs us to break her dad out who is apparently a god, out of a jail for gods. We are level five. <laughs> and offers, like, a functionally infinite amount of gold in return. So my character doesn't <laughs> particularly care for gold or anything she can offer, but goes along with it just out of curiosity. I... Some other players have questions about what happens if they refuse, and she proceeds to summon a bunch of wolves and say that she would set them on this if we didn't agree. So that's not really a ask, that's a demand. Uh, um, it's a little we... threat! If they're yeah. just blackmailing them! I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a blackmailing we, we... threat, but... We agree and are teleported to her house, which is apparently on the back of a terrace. Of not course, sure if it I is. spelled that right, but of you get the idea. Is. Oh, at this, at this point, I see. I knew you'd cringe at this. At this point, one of the characters tries to duel the NPC. It is immediately Ooh. clear that the NPC is unbeatable. No they shit, aren't, she's they like aren't, a god. No, no. Here's the best part. In parentheses, they aren't even real attacks, and half the time he doesn't roll, saying that the player couldn't reasonably beat her anyways. So she's just able to immediately beat the character. The duel ends with the aforementioned character magically entombed with a cave in a cave without an opening on the back of the terrasque. Okay. I start to slowly back away from the NPC, but the pools of acid on the back of the terrasque start to rise when I do this, so I stop. What pools the of fuck? acid? What's happening? <laughs> what kind of terrasque is this? At this point, another player decides he's tired of the NPC's games and attempts to jump off the back of the terrasque. He is immediately teleported to the top again. Of course he is. He tries various other methods of killing himself and they end a similar way where the NPC puts her hand on his head and attempts a spell to knock the character unconscious. The player makes a con save and rolls high but fails. The DM says the character is knocked unconscious for a few minutes and when he returns to consciousness, seems to be infantile and thinks the NPC is his mother. Oh, Jesus Christ. At this point, the player decides to leave because he doesn't feel like he has any actual ability to affect the story in any way. You don't. He is very polite about it and says the play styles are just not compatible and doesn't mean to defend, to offend the DM. He then leaves the call and the NPC proceeds to kill his character for disrespecting her father. At this point, we are half an hour in and I am extremely lost and confused. You think? Why are you still here? Why are many of you oh, this still poor, here? This poor first timer has no idea. Uh, we cut to a two-week journey to wherever we are going on the back of this terrasque, and one of the now three remaining characters is having connectivity issues and has to leave. 
It's just me and the other guy now. He asks if there's anything we would like to do while we wait. There are some minor character interactions, and then one of the characters asks if there is a training area and initiates a fight with some sort of holographic elves. There's a lot more of them than him, and he seems nervous and asks if anyone else is around. I say my character is probably sitting on the sidelines chilling. It is just a training session, so I don't join in for a bit because I assume it won't go too south since it was a controlled circumstance. But eventually the other player is really low on HP and I joined the initiative to heal him because he was about to die and there are still like three guys left. So I felt like my assumption that it wouldn't go south was incorrect. You think? But I'm but I'm in the fight now and the DM encourages me to use a lightning spell as apparently it would deal maximum damage because of my domain. The only lightning spell I, I have is third level call lightning. He seems surprised that call lightning is a third level but we both double check and confirm that it is. I think I managed to kill at least one and then another round goes by and there's still one guy. It's my turn again and I cast Guiding Bolt. I upcast to level 3 because fuck it, we're traveling and I don't need to save spell slots. But the DM doesn't know what Guiding Bolt is. What? Which is, sh- which is shocking to me because I thought that was like one of the most stereotypical cleric spells there are. Yes! And I knew that it, that it was just from existing on the internet. The other player explains the spell and I cast it. I hit and he survives but barely. The remaining hologram then proceeds to knock the other guy unconscious on his turn. I had no idea he was this low on hit points again. At that point, the fight ends with the OP NPC stepping in and absolutely murdering the last holographic elf guy without a roll and healing the unconscious player character. Then out of fucking nowhere, the MP- NPC asks the other player um, if they look beautiful mm-hmm. and cast charm person on them. And then while he is charmed, she sexually assaults the player. It was a war for it, so I'm unsure about the logistics of that, but that's not the point. I'm unsure if the other player was on on this onto this or expected it as he and the dm seem to know each other at this point i'm deeply uncomfortable oh, it was stated oh, that the campaign would have adult content which i was fine with but i assumed that any <laughs> sexual encounters would be between consenting parties though i did not have a chance to clarify this i voiced my discomfort and he says that it won't happen in the future and that's what session zeros are for this isn't a session zero this and that is... they are good for testing boundaries that's also yeah, not what they're no. i say that he could have just asked me what i was comfortable with up front and yeah he says he's better than other dms with sexual content because some will make you describe it <laughs> i say the i say the issue isn't about how graphic it is rather that there isn't any consent present he says again about how it won't happen again and that it was just to test my boundaries i say okay and leave the call Anyway, I assume Session Zero would be mostly talking and figuring out logistics, and I'm absolutely bewildered and blindsided by this, by this first experience. Am I just stupid and wrong about how D&D is typically played, or is this weird like I think it is? If, I am not, if I'm just not understanding how this sort of thing is meant to play out, and this is actually normal, let me know. But either way, this went really poorly all around. And it's so funny, all the comments like, yeah, that's not a Session Zero. Yeah, yeah, literally, um, just straight up. He's like, yeah, no, not at all. That's not Session Zero that doesn't involve role-playing. It's where you, the other players, and the DM all sit down and chew over what you want the game to look like. I mean, like, it it, oh. it, it can maybe be, like, maybe a slight introduction, but that it, it starts off like that. It starts off where you guys are all above table, meta-conversing about what, yeah, you want the game to look like, be expectations, your characters... All of that stuff. And then if you maybe get through all that stuff in a reasonable amount of time, maybe then you can like kind of go like a session one point or or a session point five or whatever, where you like you actually start engaging in like gameplay and stuff to maybe become more familiar with the game or maybe to even implement certain maybe homebrew rules or whatever else. Like you can do that, but usually primarily the intention is to just converse and talk about it to make sure your expectations and understandings are clear of what this game and campaign is um and yeah none of that was that i just oh my god dude i'm gonna i i literally i'm having flashbacks like i feel like i'm having like war flashbacks from my cringe campaign that i was a part of because this is the same this is like almost just just band for band the same exact kind of shit that happened <laughs> to all of us like i i am having trauma flashbacks right now to it like even even the sexual misconduct shit that was happening is like the same thing literally overpowered npcs who can just do whatever they want they, they can just they can just fuck with you do anything that they want you have no ability to, to any really whatever to them like they over they're also overly sexualized to just weird extents for no real reason 
uh, I'm honestly, I would not be surprised if this guy literally had a session with the GM as a part of the cringe campaign that I was in. Like, I feel like this, this might ex- be the same exact dude. I'm not even kidding. It's crazy. Oh man. Oh God. I just, ah, uh, God. Whoo. Any, any other, any other thoughts you might have on this one, Sammy? No, this one's pretty self-explanatory. It sucks. Um, cool. Let's, let's move on. I need to, I need to, I need to get away from this. I need to, I need to wash this off. I feel like a chill has just run through my body from all of that. All right. Next story of the day, y'all titled when the party wanted more nuanced villain than your typical dark Lord and GM delivered, but the party is still mad and even wants to join the BBEG. Uh, by Realistic Lime 7534. So, the party uh, my friend is DMing for decided it was time for something new with the BBEG. They were tired of the typically comically evil, pale, slender wizard and wanted something eh, a bit more nuanced, you know? The GM listened to them and decided that in the current session, they would be fighting the mysterious Mistress of the Eternal Light who was once a noble advisor to the king, but for reasons unknown, decided to go rogue. She has already slaughtered numerous villages and plans to commit more genocide uh, on on more people. Uh, The king's spy master hires the party to find and defeat her. So the party knows their enemy. Or maybe not? Question mark? Mm Hmm? Along the way, they meet a kind, beautiful, and brave sorceress named Solari. She's named Solari. Hint, hint. Wink, wink. Nudge, wink, nudge. Wink, nudge. Whose previous party was murdered by the Mistress of the Eternal Light, M-O-E-L. She wants to join the party to avenge her companions and help defeat M-O-E-L. The party accepts her offer and continues their journey. Solari says that she knows the location of the bandit camps hired by the by M-O-E-L or Moel? We'll go with Moel. Strangely, the camps consist not only of bandits and rags, but also of heavily armored soldiers. Hmm. The party doesn't suspect anything and starts to adore her because she is a absolutely beautiful, resembling a fantasy version of Marilyn Monroe, apparently, and B, is incredibly helpful in fights. However, throughout the journey, Solari starts showing hints that she might be hiding something you don't say, but the party thinks she has the right to keep her secrets. (laughs) What? Only the monk suspects something, but at worst, only thinks that she is Moel's daughter or a relative of some kind. Okay, still feels like that should be something that should be, you know, addressed, perhaps? Ah. Then comes the culmination and the climactic reveal. At some point, Solari does in fact reveal that she is the mistress of the eternal light. (sighs) To say the party was shocked would be an absolute understatement. How? How? Some were angry, some were stunned, and some couldn't believe what she said. She also reveals that they that they didn't actually slaughter bandits in those camps, but rather the army of the king she previously served, which feels hard for me to kind of wrap my head around because wouldn't they have like the actual like, you know, seal or symbol of like the royal army or guard, especially if they're at a encampment. Like that's kind of literal. like, okay. Um, she explains that the king's court was spreading corruption that poisoned the entire kingdom and civil wars were not uncommon within this kingdom. And Solari realized that the aristocrats had to be purged and the king must become an absolute monarch who couldn't be blackmailed or manipulated. So wait a minute. If the so-called mistress of eternal light is an enemy that served the king previously, did the king not tell them the mistress of eternal light's like real name and instead just referred to her as only her moniker? Like was she was like someone that she who shall not be named? Like I like because she's going by Solari. <laughs> is that her real name? Because once again, you, you can't help but notice a very clear like 
similarities. Soul, Ari, Solaris, Sol like Mistress of Eternal Light. Like, uh, man, maybe maybe the actual theme of today's uh, uh, story is an episode is really unaware players are just really just like where where's the the deduction here where where is where is the logical deduction or even just the recognition of you know obvious stuff i'm 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 i'm, 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 I'm throwing for a loop here okay um ooh. But when the king had heard her idea about, you know, purging the entirety of the aristocrats and nobility so that the king could become an absolute monarch who couldn't be blackmailed or manipulated, he became enraged, called her a mad witch, and banished her from the kingdom. Because of her flawless work as an advisor, however, the king didn't put her on a kill list. Sweet. Even though she was banished, she couldn't leave the kingdom in danger from the court. She knew what to do and began killing the aristocrats to save the king from their influence. But wait, didn't she also say that she was destroying entire villages and slaughtering numerous, like, innocents? Where, where did that come from? If she's only killing the upper echelons, were, were the nobility, like, slaughtering innocents and then framing her to then get put out a hit on her? Even though if she was killing nobility, they could have already just easily have put out a hit on her for being a, you know, a, a, an assassin. Um, cool. Some of them were the king's close and distant relatives uh, that she murdered. When she ravaged castles and villages, she called herself the mistress of the eternal light. Again, castles and villages. <clears throat> Why are you ravaging the villages? What? What's the? What, aren't you trying to save the kingdom? After she explained this, the party was furious. They claimed to the GM that she couldn't be evil and that she just wanted to save the kingdom by destroying innocent villages. That sometimes ha that sometimes hard choices are necessary for the greater good, and that she is too complex to be evil. That's not being complex doesn't mean you're not necessarily evil. But oh, and also. She was just super fucking hot. Some of them even wanted to join the BBEG in her quest to save the kingdom from the aristocrats. To say that GM's eyes weren't twitching is an understatement. TLDR, the party wanted a more nuanced BBEG, and the GM agreed and delivered. The king's spymaster hired them to defeat the mistress of eternal light. The party then met a beautiful sorceress named Slari and decided to travel with her, not knowing that she was actually the BBEG. How? When they found out, and she explained her motivation, saving the kingdom, quote unquote, in quotation marks, they were furious and insisted that she couldn't be evil because she had a noble goal. And also because she was really effing hot. In post. I mean, look. Let's be fair. All right. <laughs> She's pretty goddamn hot. Honestly, I would take that. Okay, that's fair. She's hot as hell. You know, there is such a thing as pretty privilege. So you know what? Sure. You know? All right. No, I, I mean, that. that's exactly how I would interact with But, but let's not, let us not, however, on the other hand, let us not even begin to entertain the notion that her motivations make any goddamn sense based off of at least what's being presented here. Again, if she's slaughtering innocent villages and towns in an effort to, I guess, kill the aristocracy to save the king, your kingdom are your citizens those villages and those towns that you're apparently destroyed did she not do that again i don't know I'm, I'm i feel like we're missing a lot of vital information here to actually have any kind of understanding of what's happening going on also how did the players not know it like this this was uh, and, and not not to throw any shade at the gm but this was the most just like bare bone just obvious twist like uh, the nuance again i feel like I don't even know if you can really say they're new. She's a nuanced character because, again, if she's destroying <laughs> towns and villages, her her motivations are she she's she's contradicting herself. That's a contradiction to because she's like, hey, there's all kinds of civil unrest. There's all kinds of like civil war and everything in this kingdom, and it's like, okay, ah. Uh, Again, I feel I feel like we're missing a shit ton. Um, there definitely, yes, 
Uh, I, I feel I, I just like, I feel lost. I feel I'm, I feel like we're missing a very the, ins- like I'm like the way that the 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 OP just themselves describes them as as a, it was a nuanced villain and it wasn't this black and white. Is this good? Is this bad? Are they doing the right thing? Are they doing the wrong thing? So there's definitely some context missed here. Because it feels kind of like a pretty black and white scenario. I don't know. Like, I, can, I can kind of see between the lines of like, well... I know what they were going for, for yeah. sure. I just, I feel like the execution was not there just based off of what the OP has provided. Um, I just, yeah, it's just kind of like, it's like, yeah, it seems kind of black. It seems pretty kind of definitive. Like, you know, I get what they're going for. And there is a little bit of nuance, I guess, a little bit of complexity, but not 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 a ton. Uh Top ro- top voted comment uh, uh, underneath says the DM should just lean into it. Go ahead, join up with the BBEG. Scratch that. The savior of the kingdom. Then have her order them to slaughter villages and carry out those genocides she was planning. Eventually, they'll learn there's a difference between good intentions and evil outcomes. Like that's what I'm saying. It's, it's like, wait, it, literally, if she's actually planning on genociding, like what? What is? What is? Where is the nuance? Where? I mean, where no, is- no. This this sounds exactly like the people that are like, yeah, but Thanos isn't a bad guy um that's what this is so you get to see you get to see what your players do that is more nuanced than that's big evil guy go kill him well but here's the thing right to be i mean to be fair it's even like (laughs) there is i guess some nuance to 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 thanos at least in terms of just like in in the movie how he's depicted in a live action movie the cinematic universe is just kind of stupid it doesn't make sense at all because that's not how he's depicted in the comics. The comics version of of Thanos is he's just obsessed with death. And he's he's evil but also not really because he's not he's not necessarily just like he is selfish. He's arrogant, he's selfish and he kind of just, you know, he unleashes his own will and 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 uh, arrogance upon the universe just to do what he wants, but mm-hmm. it also is kind of from a place of just like almost innocence and that it's just like well i don't he yeah, doesn't really, he doesn't I really think, care about I think all that people just, would like thanos if thanos was hot you know and that's i think that's the the moral i mean some some people do think he's pretty hot which is interesting hey you know whatever you're into well, josh you know, brolin like, is but yeah. thanos isn't um, well yeah you i know what i'm saying some people you know the, the I love big the purple comment, <laughs> some comment ah uh, morally gray yeah. you your sexy head yet again <laughs> Ah, like, yeah. So I, I, we, I, we obviously we don't have a couple of things here. We don't have how is this character being played by the DM? Because like you, if you are charismatic enough and beguiling and smart and clever enough, you can convince people to do things that they would oh, not humbly do anyway. One hundred percent, especially if you're hot as shit. Like oh, that, yeah. that helps so much. So, like, again, so like, I was joking, but I, I was only partly joking. Pretty privilege is really a thing. Like that is, you know, well, where you're like, thing. yeah, where you're just always, like, always, always, like a sit, like, and just another thing though is what I want to know, like. Uh, uh, she wants to join her. Like I, I, the spy master, they they sent them out to take care of her, right? So, I mean, what I'm also confused of, though, is Solari joins the party, and then she's the one that's like, oh, hey, I know the location of bandit camps hired by whatever. But wait, if the spy master was the one who hired you guys in the first place to deal with the mistress of eternal light, wouldn't he know where her forces are? Wouldn't he have already Again, given you? Again, am, am I looking at her face <laughs> and she's talking? What is she wearing? You know, there's a lot of things that come into. I, I know. I, you know what? I know exactly what she's wearing. She's most likely wearing, uh, like very revealing clothing, obviously, uh-huh. because she has to be. I'm sure she's just. Well, she's bodacious. the mistress of it. She's exactly. The... She's she's got to be a bodacious as all hell. She's she's probably got like you know just curve curves out the wazoo. I mean, if you're gonna if your name's gonna be the mistress of the eternal light, you better have a, just an absolutely banging outfit. Yeah, I mean, um, literally, it, it just shines, you know, like like you know, sparkly, probably. Although she wouldn't want to be that because then that would be too much of an obvious, you know. No, she's homage, just wearing the she's right? just wearing the uh, Marilyn Monroe dress. That's yeah, just her outfit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all shiny, she's, sparkly, and she's and always everything. above a magical air vent. Yep. Is the, how yep. it works. Oh, just like always just having Can you find magical. some she's, she's always <laughs> just levitating is what it is. She's levitating yeah. and so her clothes are always just levitating and she's just like, "Oh my, I I could use the help of some big swung adventurers, you know?" Oh, good. God. I mean, hey, look, 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 look. 
if you want to just, you know, side with the super sexy mommy, you know, of eternal light, the mistress mommy of eternal light, because she's hot, you want to get in there maybe? Okay, you know, hey. Why not? At least be honest about it. That's all I'm saying. Don't try to pretend like she maybe actually has a real point here because well, I don't she know might. if she you does. Never know, Adam. Yeah, no, but she does it though, Sam. We do know actually. She we know. So my point is, if you just want to simp, just be a simp. Just be honest about it. If you're gonna do it, just just dive head on into the simp too. But don't pretend like it's like you know here. You know, you know, as you're just like staring, like just just boring holes into her face and other parts of you her went, body. You I guess in such a high octave that it cut off at the top of your mic. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it did. Uh, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, but also, yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, let's let's overthrow a kingdom for no apparent reason. That's uh, but this is a very apparent reason. There, we all know the reason. Well, there's corruption, let's... Adam. You gotta throw. Yeah. There's corruption. Yeah, you gotta get real dirty. You gotta get evil real politicians. Dirty. That's what I. I've, I've always wanted to kill evil politicians. That's what I want to do in D and D. Who hasn't dreamed of that, especially in our day and age, Sammy? Uh, but uh, with dreamed? that, I think uh, uh, oh, dreamed or fantasized. I'm saying. Uh, Put into action. <laughs> So, so, some some of them kind of did actually uh but no but you know what Let, if we got if there's nothing else you kind of have to say about this let's no uh, that's 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 all let's go ahead let's move on to the next one go ahead buddy oh sure uh now after that we have butthurt D D player sends malware to dm's computer after his character died by okay arugula 3531 uh, goodness. uh this story is kind of awkward because we were all friends who played D&D on Discord. To top it off, my cousin, the Eric Cochran monk, is still best friends with that guy, the Eric Cochran wizard. Oh, the DM also happens to be dating one of the players, Oh no. ranger. I was oh, a half no. cleric. That's not, oh, that's not bad. No. Okay, okay. The I'm dating saying, part isn't has... bad. It doesn't always. It doesn't always have to be no, bad. it doesn't have I to just, be bad. I feel like a lot of times just with these stories, whenever that's mentioned, it's like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh, uh, Our campaign started in a castle of this noble. We were all this noble's courtiers until she sent us out on our first mission. After that mission, we gained some XP and she sent us out to explore the world for suspicious hobgoblin activity. Ooh. We didn't find the hobgoblins she was worried about and end up in some dragonborn empire that held a very powerful magic item. Weird. Uh, now, the Akakran wizard was a klepto. He was always trying to steal, and if stealth didn't work, he'd just kill the people who caught him. I got notably, <laughs> notably, he ended up killing a dragonborn prince after he snuck into said prince's treasury looking for armor, loot, magic items, etc., and got caught. He killed the prince after the prince saw him looking for looting, sorry, an action we strongly advised against, I might add. Oh, did you? He then tried to hide the prince's body by casting plane shift and sending him to another realm. He failed automatically, though, because he was not even supposed to have plane shift at his level. Yes, um, he's is a rogue. What? He's a, no, he, he's not a rogue. He's a wizard. Oh, is he a wizard? I'm sorry, I thought he yeah. was a rogue. Okay, no, right. He, he's a wizard. Or wizard. Um, when he when he then got caught and faced the wrath of the dragonborn emperor. We were all arrested. The rest of us disavowed his actions, except for my cousin, the monk Eric Cochran. And we're granted a pardon if we embarked on a dangerous quest to find this evil sword, the magic item we came for in the first place. But the Eric Cochran wizard was kind of caught red-handed, so he was to be executed, as was the monk. Uh, the Eric Cochran wizard tried to escape using hypnotic pattern. Unfortunately, the guards passed, and he panicked, throwing all spells from acid splash to fireball, or even trying to sneak in meteor swarm of all spells. Again, he obviously wasn't going to be able to cast a spell at his level. Uh, the guards then asked him his last words, and now the player was raging in real life, and then he was killed. Uh, the Eric Cockman was now screaming, are you fucking serious? The DM tried to, in the kindest terms, explain that this game would not be fun without potentially dire consequences for dangerous actions. The Eric Cockman Wizards player then kept going off, and my cousin trying to join in said, <laughs> tried to join in, too, and said that the DM was being unfair. Me and the DM's boyfriend defended the DM, and the wizard was just shouting at us, too. The argument ended when the Wizards player called her a C-word wow. at a point until she just had enough and kicked the wizard from the call. We all talked about what happened for a bit and then went to bed. A few days later, I got a call from the DM explaining that she got hacked. She was very distraught over the phone to me. Uh, so me, her, and her boyfriend all met up. She told us how she clicked on a Discord link from that guy, the Eric Cochran wizard, that took her to a weird site that apparently dumped viruses on her computer. So now her computer is basically broken with weird command prompts popping up, random programs, and the computer freezing. She was very emotional, so me and the DM's boyfriend confronted that guy on the phone. 
He, for some reason, tried to deny it, even though it was on his Discord profile. He claimed that he was hacked, but when pressed, he just got pissed off again and admit, basically admitted doing it and blamed the DM for, quote, making him resort to extreme actions. Me and the DM boyfriend told him what a piece of shit he was, and then he kept trying to justify it, saying that we cyberbullied him. Her computer wouldn't have been affected if it weren't so old and shitty, and that he was doing her a favor by making her get a new one, well, and then mocked her for not having an antivirus. Bear in mind that the DM is crying in the background. At the end of this back and forth, the DM's boyfriend was angrier than I'd ever seen him and told him that if we ever saw him again, he would knock his teeth out. And then we hung up. And after the incident, we poured his account to Discord and stopped speaking to him. All of us except my cousin, who says that he get that we went too far. He gets that he went too far, but says that he just has trouble with his emotions it's and tried you. to and tried to subtly blame us for being so hard on him. He even convinced the DM not to press charges. However, she still obviously refuses to speak to him and told my cousin to stop trying to relay his messages to her or defend him. Why would you not press charges? The, the top comment here is, dude, could... she has to press charges or else he will never learn. And if I Literally. was her, I would cut your cousin off too for being for defending such a piece of shit. I mean, I'm just that. She literally says, hey, the game wouldn't be fun or interesting if it didn't have real consequences. You know what? Maybe he also should learn in real life that things have consequences in real life too because that also then hopefully transport or, or or transfer over to when he plays Dungeons and dragons maybe <laughs> that hey you shouldn't do stupid shit in fact quite frankly i'm surprised that he that his shenanigans were even allowed to go on as long as they did until it lit, uh, he literally ended up murdering a prince like what do you mean how and how is he trying to cast plane shift how does that make sense? He's just like, yo, I'm just a 20th level wizard straight up. The rest of you plebes are like, what, level five or something? Like, where? Uh... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I just, I just. Uh, I... <laughs> oh, God. That guy's like these. And then on top of that, he. he, he... What is the cousin's issues? Is the cousin, is the cousin simping? Form it sounds like the coven cousin sipping form it sounds like the cousin is trying to trying to trying to get some D from this dude. Like what's what's going on? Like what what why why are you defending him? What what is this? What's going on here? Like uh, holy shit. What what do you think, Sammy? I like I'm like I mean it's just fucking it's just weird. Weird internet behavior that I'll never understand. Um hey, buddy. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like, see, they Colson, should press yeah, charges. They should, like, fuck this guy over. I don't know. Like, uh, again, teach him a lesson. Like, uh, literally, if you're saying that, oh, the, you know, the game should have consequences, like real life. Real life should have consequences, bro. Just, like, show him, literally, if you can press charges, if, there, if there's legitimate grounds for pressing charges like this, uh, seriously, show him actual consequences for his actions and then maybe he'll just become a better person overall that's always the hope of course you know yeah like doing something because because you know he's just gonna do the same shit to somebody else like don't just let him keep getting away with it he can't keep getting away with it it's just it's it's fucking pathetic well one that that's like how you solve your problems but i don't know Wow. It's just like, really? This is this is how we're handling this now. I love this. I love this comment right here that goes like, oh yeah, after the incident, we reported his account in Discord, stopped speaking to him. Da 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 da. He just has trouble. You guys you, you you guys should just forgive him. He has trouble with his emotions. Da 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 da. And dude goes like, right. Your honor, while my client did in fact steal his neighbor car, his neighbor's car, crashed it into a tree, then pissed all over his porch, and then set set it on fire, I have to add. He just kind of has trouble with his emotions, you know? So this is why he did this. So we should all just forgive him. Oh, man. You know what? That completely justifies all the things that you just said that he did. Not guilty. Like, for real. Trouble with emotions? He malware the shit out of GM because he lost his DD character to his own stupidity. I would have gotten cops involved if that was the case. Thank you. Thank you. Stevenson of Steven Sonia. Of Steve Sonia. Eloquently, beautifully put, my friend. Yes. Yes ridiculous and this see this is exactly why people like him exist this is exactly why he does this shit if he's done this shit now he's most likely done it before or will do it again like if he suffers no actual consequences he'll just keep being like yeah especially if he has your op's freaking cousin 
to constantly enable and vouch for this behavior. Like, oh my God, I, I don't understand. I, I mean, I do, I get it. It's like, you know, you don't want any more problems. You don't want any more drama. But it's like, bro, this shit shouldn't have happened in the first place. And maybe, no. maybe if he had did it before and he was punished for it, you know, previously, he wouldn't have done it to you guys. Same thing. If you don't do it to him now, he's most likely going to just keep doing it to other people. Like, God damn it. I like, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Dudes, people like this are just goddamn disgusting. All right. Uh, and if there's anything else you have, Salmon, let's let's go ahead. Let's, let's move on to the next one. This will be the last story of the day, and then we'll go ahead and get on out of here. <laughs> I say. Uh, this story is titled, I'm Bored of This, uh, in quotations, by Astral Studios. I'm currently dealing with a friend who is becoming a problem player to me and another player in the campaign. The cast is me. Water Genasi Bard, the GM, a cool guy, but a bit too forgiving in player agency, which is an interesting thing. Esk, a tabaxi wizard, a uh, simic fighter, not given a name as he's not relevant. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. No, S is a tabaxi wizard. And then there's the simic fighter, not given a name because he's not as relevant. Uh, and then K, problem player, armor, armorer artificer, who is also a mechanic, mechanical doll. Uh, a mechanical doll race, which was homebrew. If you saw my last post about a friend possibly becoming a problem player, taken down due to my wording not being the best and coming across the wrong way, then you know the setting. Uh, we did not, in fact, I think, see the last post. The only real thing of note is that it's set in the early Industrial Revolution. Leading up to the issue, I joined the campaign at Session 10 and instantly fell in love with the group. It's heavy RP and fighting never takes too long unless a built up for a uh, unless built up for a big fight. I've been talking in detail about the campaign and its style to my coworkers and Kay decided he wanted in. He asked me if I could ask the GM if he could join. Sure, I thought it'd be fun, but he'd be rejected due to the GM saying he was happy with a party of four. Little did I know a player had just quit. The first issue arose when Kay told me what character he wanted to play. A mechanical Godzilla ripoff. So a mecha Godzilla ripoff, basically. Sure, doesn't, doesn't really seem to fit with the setting uh, the GM had created at all, but fine. GM approves the character, and me and Kay decide that to help him join the party, we'd interlock our characters. A quick one-off of trying to kidnap me to return my noble bar to her parents, create some drama, get him introduced, and move on. Oh, he also wanted to play a kaiju-born homebrew race with insane natural AC. The GM thankfully shot that down, and that's how we got to the mechanical doll. Second issue, the session to introduce K arrives. Me and S are away from fighter, trying to convince a king to ally with our party to protect his city. The kidnapping attempt happens and fails due to S knowing suggestion. K had tried to use a scroll of command uh, to sleep or scroll of command sleep to knock out S, but forgot that it only lasts one turn. K proceeded to get pouty that his planet failed, which, you know, fair enough. He thought it would be fun. But he then argues S needed to make a wisdom save to wake up, saying that he read that that was how the spell worked. It's not. And after all players and DM double check the 2014 rule description I checked on D&D Beyond, we all agreed that S waking up on the second turn was justified. Third issue, K wants to try again next session. I am not the type to say no, and I'm also not the GM. I do say, however, that the joke has run its course, but he does not listen. He only listens when he tries to include S, and he flat out tells him it wasn't even that fun the first time. This time, K backs down and says he feels bad. We all move on, and it's a month till next session. Session, Jesus, month, holy crap. Session three with K passes without incident. Hooray! Session four with K. There isn't any. He couldn't make it to the session, and when he arrives and decides to hop in the VC and see where we're at, wants to do the most disruptive thing possible to the scene. 
We were bartering with my character's parents for her and her brother to continue traveling with the party. He says he wants to ca to crash in through a window, which doesn't make any sense. First of all, my backstory, the backstory bomb or my backstory of my parents employ him, meaning he shouldn't want to do that in character. Oh, I see. Okay, his parents employ, right. Secondly, he doesn't know we're there. He just wants to say he he just wants to say he knows and do this thing because it'd be funny. Oh my god, I, I I've also played with a player like this before, and it's it is the most aggravating thing. We play a pretty serious campaign. Our party doesn't often do things because haha funny unless it's with words or a joke between PCs. Our jokes never affect the world outside PC interaction. Sorry, OP you could probably really stand for some punctuation here. It's a bit difficult to see where changes in. Anyway, take, for example, S using invisibility and covering my character's eyes while invisible saying, guess who? Uh, DM thankfully shut this down, saying K had been offline and session was almost over. Important note, the final contract between my parents and the party said K, my character, and her brother were now working for the party for five years, free to leave whenever they so desire. There was more, but this is essentially what we told K of the contract. You'd think he'd take this opportunity knowing that, hey, the party spoke to the parents, meaning your job in business following Bard is done. No need to take orders from her anymore. Would mean he detaches from my character, right? No. He instead sends his familiar to find me saying, I don't take orders from Bard. What? After session, Kate texts me saying he is bored of being non-sentient. Yeah, you heard that right. The only arc his character has is becoming sentient. He wants my character to tell him to do something next session so he can refuse and leave the party meaning we'd have to chase him. I say, no, I'm done play being a plot device for his character. We gave him a way to actually role play some sentience and he chose not to take it. I tell him to work with the GM if he wants to make such an abrupt change in his character and to make it actually work story-wise. The only reason my character ordered him around was to keep him in check and to stay with the group. It's not a worry, so no need to boss anymore. After this, I started to notice a theme in his characters after him not playing D&D for a year. They're all gag characters and ripoffs. He doesn't come up with any kind of original ideas anymore. He had so many other characters he could have chosen to fit with the campaign better, but chose to make a joke. He claims to love RP, but plays a character that would not get much RP time or even would resent, would reasonably talk that much. Okay. I think that was my little mess up there. So our S and I are starting to get annoyed. We all know how to go with the flow, but we're honestly struggling to work with this character. Unlike the others, he just doesn't fit in. I feel like he should swap characters now, but he just won't. He insists he loves this character, but I honestly don't feel like he does. What do I do? Edit. I also want to say I have no problem with him being bored of his character. I get it if you have ideas and sometimes they pan out and sometimes they go they don't. My issue is that he didn't talk to the GM before me. This idea he had to essentially bypass character development wasn't cleared with the GM as I feel it should be, so he can, you know, plan for it. Uh he also just started treating my bard like a plot device. And while early in the campaign, think first few sessions I was in. That would have been fine. She's grown a lot from helpless noblewoman, but I feel like adding his character who basically just overpowers her all the time and forces her to do things against her will is backtracking her development. End post. Um, we do actually have an update as well uh, from the OP uh, that goes uh, update. TLDR of my last post, dear friend, I got into the campaign is becoming a bit of a problem with not understanding his fun ideas don't fit with the party and is now bored of his non-sentient character when the whole arc for his character was gaining sentience. Cast, me, the one who asked Kay to join out of a feeling of owing him, one. Again, weird, weird sentence structure. K, dead friend and problem player. S, other player, also annoyed at Kay's antics. GM, the GM. Update, I spoke to Kay about what he wants from the campaign. I asked him outright, and he asked if I meant character or main story-wise. I told him I meant what kind of campaign he's looking for and what about what I told him about the campaign made him interested. Specifically, I asked, is he looking for a joking campaign? Basically, a really silly one. Or is he looking for an epic combat-focused campaign? 
maybe he's looking for one to grow a character in or one that focuses on exploration. He said all of the above question mark. He got interested due to my description or of character interaction and storytelling. I brought up, he didn't pick a character that lends itself to role play, which he claims to love. And he said he did it to see how we all fit together. In my opinion, choosing a closed off character is better. And I voiced that. What? <laughs> he said he screwed himself on how long it would take to actually grow his character at that point, And his imagination got the better of him. I think we all need to sit down with the gym to discuss it as S is annoyed by this as well. End post. Okay, what uh, what do you think about this, Sammy? Like, part of me is like, maybe you could save it. Um, but the the fact is, they went and talked to him, which is good. Like, that's a huge. Bit. I mean, yeah, hopefully, just I, I don't know why they didn't clear this with the GM in the first place, though. Like, I can respect how Kay is saying, like, I you know. It seems like he feels like he screwed himself over, but I, I think it seems clear he's maybe just being incredibly impatient. And like he he maybe had a very specific Im image image or idea of like what he was expecting kind of his character to be, to do, to have an effect on. And like it it's not working and he's kind of being maybe a bit selfish. And now he's he's not, I guess, sure how to get out of it. I don't know. Like, I just don't understand even how we're getting to this point at all like yeah i again though i think like the reality is you talked with the problem player which is usually the first step in an issue like this but my i would be hesitant to give them a lot of other chances um, i just yeah like because I I, like i understand you're like oh i feel like i owe this person da, 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 i brought them in da, 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 da. great that's fine. But understand that, like, you do that, you're going to continue to open the door for shenanigans that you might not want. You just have to make it very clear that if they continue to cause problems, that you're not going to deal with it. Like, talking to someone, getting their opinion, seeing what they want, seeing what page they're on is great and all, but you have to set boundaries according to how the rest of the table also wants to play the game. It's not just about one person, it's about everybody. And if he's the only person out on what they want if everyone else wants something different from the table then they need to either change the way they're playing or find a new group to play with it's really not that hard yeah, there's a reason why it's like you know sometimes you're just not a fit for a group whether you're the problem they're the problem or no one's the problem some people just don't fit together um especially in a game like D&D &D where it's very collaborative i mean i just yeah i don't understand like why like again, I I just I don't I don't like we we've, we've said this before. I'll say it again. I don't understand how certain players are just like, where are you trying to go with this character? Especially here's the thing, I have played I have played with a player like this before, where they're just like, oh yeah no, no no this thing will be super funny. It'll be so funny if I do this. It'll be hilarious. And it's like he's just being kind of a dick. Like he's just being kind of an asshole. Where it's just like this one player was literally just like. I, it would just be so funny if I just walked up to this, to walked up to your character and just like attacked you like eight times, right? That would be hilarious. It's like, what? What? What the fuck are you talking? What? No, you dumb fuck. What are you? How would that be funny? How would that be hilarious at all? It's like no, no, no. I'd be, I, you know, I just walk up, I just attack you. Like it'd be hilarious. <laughs> like I just, I just, I just punch you like eight times. So fun. That how and he's like he's like yeah no, no, no. like i thought it'd be hilarious if i could just like i could just like grab two people's like two of my party members heads and like just clank them together it'd be hilarious be so fun what's the joke what what are you taught you're just being a dick like again you are just disrupting what's happening like you're just literally just like yeah i'll just i'll just you know break in through the window i'll just swing in through the window and land it'll be hilarious like what, what what do you imagine is going to happen like you imagine you'll, you'll bust in through the window you know like like you know uh th uh three uh musketeer the, the three musketeer style that's what i was looking for you land on the ground you're just like da -da -da! and people are just what they're gonna clap for you you're gonna be like whoa <laughs> like 
where where is the joke? What is the joke? What's what is funny? It could be maybe fun for you to be like, I have a cool entrance, but that wouldn't really be a cool entrance because what what's the reason for it? It's just random and it's just random and destructive and disruptive. I think that really yeah. says something about him as an individual, as as a player, or even just a person, maybe to a to a certain extent, where it's just like he just he, it seems like he kind of almost actively, I mean, hell, the OP even says he just makes joke characters. Yeah. He just he wanted to play a mecha Godzilla character. Like and I, I that's another thing I hate. I hate people who just want to rip off of already pre-established, you know, shit. On like again, you can absolutely, and we've said it before, be inspired by these things. There's nothing wrong with that. Take inspiration 100 percent but take it and then make it into something your own. Don't literally just take a character and dump it in there and be like, I'm this character now. <laughs> or 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 like that's not fun. It's not interesting. It's not funny at all. Like you can make a character who maybe has certain like aspects or or mannerisms or behaviors that are similar to a funny character. That can be funny at times, you know, where you like you speak or act like Kronk from Emperor's New Groove, you know, that can be pretty funny, but you need to have your own personal take on it. Because if you're just playing Kronk, it's like, well, you're just playing Kronk. And maybe that can be funny like the first two times that you do it, but it gets old really effing quick. It'll get old really effing quick. Have some originality, have some like, don't just, don't just try to ruin and disrupt the session and the, and, and the campaign because you think it'll be funny to do so. It's, it, you're being a dick. You shouldn't be playing with people. It's a, it's a cooperative storytelling game, a cooperative narrative game. That's the point of D&D. It's literally it, it, the whole description of it. And so if you cannot be cooperative and if you cannot you know, actually try to, to help make something good with your fellow players, then <clears throat> what are you doing here? There's no reason to have you here. There's no reason for you to be here. I'm sorry, but that's, that's the truth of it. And it's just, yeah. it's just sad to see because I, I, it seems like the rest of them are taking it seriously and, and to a, to a reasonable extent, obviously there, there should be some humor, you know, some comedic effect because that's also how real life is too. Right. When times get hard or difficult, make some jokes, have some fun here or there, but not again in a disruptive or dickish manner. You can do that without being an asshole. And I just, yeah. I, ugh, he's just, it just seems like he's being incredibly selfish, but you know what? Maybe that changes. You know what I do love OP. It was, it was a little bit difficult uh, reading and man, maybe, maybe, you know, but what I do love that OP did though, is OP just straight up confronted him. He just straight up asked. He was like, yo, what's up? Like, I love that. OP, if you ever watch this, kudos to you. You have my utmost respect. Good good on you. And it seems like that also provided some progress, right? You're going to, you, you know, you, you are like, you know, we all maybe need to sit down and have a, a discussion with the GM because we're starting to get annoyed. And it seems like K doesn't even really understand or know like what he was trying to do. And and look for like he doesn't really seem to know, and so it's that's important. Have like and I think another uh, another thing like right off the bat, one of the top voted comments on the on the original post was, UK and the GM have to hold a session zero and a half or something, so you can discuss what it is that K wants from the campaign going forward. Yeah. Directly ask him what the deal is with his trend with joke characters, and if he keeps deliberately being obtuse. Tell him in no in no uncertain terms that it could mean he he just isn't a good fit for the campaign. I mean, you went out on a limb for him, but it's not fair to your group if he jeopardizes something you've all built together. Oh, wow, beautiful. Frankly, it was a shit gamble to tell him to join the party if you knew what he might be like. Agreed. It sounds like the GM may have let him join as a favor to you. Yep, since if you invited K, that must have meant you wanted K in the game. Exactly. And is indulgent for your sake. Don't play these mind games. Communicate directly. Even now, you're waffling about doing so in case you hurt someone's feelings. Better talk before anything worse happens. Love it! Uh, uh, poster uh, Gunnar Hilder. I, I'm sorry, I, I can't. I would I would not be able to pronounce that Nordic name. I, I assume it's like 
Gunnar Hilder or something. Um, but I completely butchered that. I apologize. Uh, but beautiful. I love it. You said it so fucking well. Could not say it better myself. And then OP does respond. The thing is, I knew he had this character, but I'd never played with him. I also didn't really invite him. He invited himself. I agreed to ask because Kay has done me a lot of favors. I thought he'd play this character more seriously based off what he told me from his original campaign. I know Kay can engage in good role play. I've seen it when he's not acting canonically as his character. It feels like he wrote himself in a box and is stuck between sinking with it or abandoning the ship. You said you'd never played with him before. So I don't, what do you mean you've seen it when he's not acting canonically? I don't, you say he can engage in good role play. Okay. Then the uh, the OP gonna hear her again says, he needs to hear exactly that from you. At any rate, you're both adults and you're not ultimately responsible for his decisions, only for what you contribute to the group dynamic. If S is also annoyed, don't let it get to the point where another player quits. Push the emergency meeting button and you all convene with your GM and don't let the problem fester. Again, fantastically said. Ironically, the OP's response got like 13 downvotes initially. And then another response from the OP, OP goes, I know. Me, I know me and S are going to be talking tomorrow, and today he expressed not knowing what to do. I didn't get to bring up the idea of speaking to DM about it to him today because he had to leave, but I plan on bringing it up tomorrow. Uh, yeah. So I mean, again, I think I think OP he did hear what the people what, what the commenters were saying, and they and and they did go or sorry she or he I'm sorry either one they did go and talk with the G uh, and talk with K and hopefully now you guys will then continue on to then talk with uh to talk with the GM as well. So honestly, I think there's there's actual progress and there's there's a legit a legitimate chance for you to salvage this situation. And just just keep keep being honest, keep being communicative, you know, keep having a dialogue and hopefully if K really does want to stay, you know, and play then he'll make that change, you know, uh, and, and adjustment as is necessary. But uh, unless you have something else that you want to add at all, Sammy, I, uh, yeah, I do believe that that's, quite well. that that's all we've got for you today, y'all. Thank you guys so much. Again, please be sure to leave a like and a comment down below what you guys think of these stories, what you guys think of how these stories were taken. You guys think that some of these these players that we've talked about today were just super dumb idiot dummies or if maybe they just things weren't explained enough or maybe if they were high off their asses or what what you guys might think of, you know, that whole interactions. Uh we we'd love to hear it and your thoughts as always. Be sure to like and and uh, sorry, be sure to subscribe and share the channel. We appreciate it immensely. And as always, we will catch you guys next time when we dive back down into the archive. Bye, everybody.